Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon, colleagues. Mr. Speaker, every time budget time comes around, you know, I am always, you know, amazed by how time flies. And, you know, always want to give thanks, you know, um, thanks and praise. First fellow Syrians 5.8 says, give thanks in all things. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I note that the proceedings so far have been without disturbance of any kind, although I just noticed a little back and forth, and I'm hoping it's not going to start now. I, there's, a, there's a glaring absence in, in, in the chamber right now, and that may be responsible, but... Um, <laughs> but, but, Mr. Speaker, um, we will, we will hopefully go forward with, you know, very healthy exchange. Mr. Speaker, I want to acknowledge your presence for the member for Babono. Madam, I'm very happy to see you, and you look very well. You know, but, you know, I, I don't rush the brush, you know, just take it easy, you know, because many of us, you know, have, have had our challenges, and Mr. Speaker, I'm sure you can appreciate, you know, we have to give thanks. We have to give thanks for every day that we live, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I indulge your patience in I'm trying to I'm trying to focus, yes, yes. I indulge your patience, Mr. Speaker, in my brief preamble just to guide the way um, that I will be going forward. And Mr. Speaker, it is very likely that someone following our parliament would observe that the government in office would rather not have the opposition present during parliamentary debates. On the contrary, Mr. Speaker, a healthy doc a healthy democracy would relish constructive discourse without the slander and mapery that has unfortunately become a norm in your house. It's a fact, it's a fact. Mr. Speaker, the estimates of revenue and expenditure presented leaves ample space for speculation and inconsistency. And my contribution today would be mainly seeking clarification and expressing concerns identified to date. Of course, Mr. Speaker, I say to date because, you know, um, as we go along through the year, you know, certain things are identified and you would like to speak about it. And so, Mr. Speaker, I make my contribution well intended, contrary to the statements made by the from member, and he has already started, the member from Beaufort North, from, from, from Denry North, who somehow believes that I make nasty remarks, and I'm still waiting for him to advise me on the nasty remarks that you know, I make. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure what bug I have put in his, in, his, in, his, in his nest, but apparently there's something that irritates him whenever I, I make a statement. Of course, Mr. Speaker, I will make mention to matters relating to my constituency, but will be more detailed when we return to the House to discuss the appropriation bill. As stated by the member, the Minister of Finance, we're hoping to return on April 23rd. Mr. Speaker, as I listened to the Minister of Finance, I had reason to reflect on the performance of the past administration while I, which I served in. And Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I reflected on the onslaught of COVID-19 and the crippling effect it had on our economy. Many, included members opposite, attempted to downplay the occasion and the aftermath of the pandemic. But history will reflect that the government of the United Workers Party was a divine intervention to save St. Lucia from the chaos and pandemonium that the COVID brought upon us, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Finance, the member for Castries East, 
indicated that wages and salaries cost the government about $575 million annually and made up about 30% of total expenditure. In addition, Mr. Speaker, debt servicing and interest payments of about $370 million, or roughly 20%. Mr. Speaker, during the COVID pandemic, nobody had compassion for the government in office. I remember dealing with the trade unions, Mr. Speaker, and obviously the opposition then had no compassion as well. Mr. Speaker, you are fully aware that any default in debt and what the application would be for a country. Mr. Speaker, we never missed a payment or a debt obligation. And Mr. Speaker, we did all that and the price of fuel never went past $13.25. Today, Mr. Speaker, we hear about a surplus budget. Today, Mr. Speaker, we hear about a surplus budget. I think the, 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 the Prime Minister spoke about a surplus of about $100 million. The question, Mr. Speaker, is could that surplus not be used to subsidize fuel at the pump? That is how you put people first. Mr. Speaker, where is the benefit? What is the benefit, Mr. Speaker, and where is the benefit to the public of boasting of surplus? Mr. Speaker, you know the government balance sheet is very unique to what we know as a, a, a balance sheet, Mr. Speaker. And the government balance sheet is very unique. And when it comes to surplus, the government obviously can decide how they adjust that surplus. As government, and, and Mr. Speaker, you know, the thing about it is, the people out there can interpret, can interpret that a surplus could mean either overtaxing or not using the money for the people. Mr. Speaker, in fact, when you boast of a surplus, it can also be interpreted as a, a rich man continuing to, 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 to praise and worship the money he has in the bank, but not taking care of his children. Mr. Speaker, But Mr. Speaker, very importantly, very importantly, Mr. Speaker, that's my handwriting, honorable member, that's my handwriting. Mr. Speaker, there was a revelation that was made and, and, and the solution public needs to take it very, very serious, Mr. Speaker, because it appears to me, Mr. Speaker, that the government has finally opened a lockbox. Because according to the Honorable Prime Minister, the lockbox that could not be found, he was able to pay DFCs not only for 2023, but for 2024. And you know, Mr. Speaker, isn't, I think that's extremely amazing. That's extremely amazing, Mr. Speaker, because it appears that the lockbox is working the magic. Mr. Speaker, you found a friend? Mr. Speaker, <laughs> the then opposition had everything negative to say on our borrowing <laughs> to keep the country moving. But since coming into office, this government has also borrowed millions in the name of COVID and wants to give merit to their borrowing, but consider our borrowing reckless. When civil servants, Mr. Speaker, never missed a paid it. Mr. Speaker, I strongly believe, and I'm consistent in the House, that there is a time and a place for all borrowing, as long as the people we serve benefit. But Mr. Speaker, let's move on. And you can pay it back. Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Finance, no less than six times in his presentation, spoke about 
administrative bottlenecks, preventing the efficient delivery bills. And I say that again, Mr. Speaker. The Minister of Finance, the Honorable Prime Minister, spoke no less than six times about administrative bottlenecks preventing the efficient deliveries, deliverables, sorry. Mr. Speaker, I am not sure if what the Honorable Prime Minister was referring to was meant to speak to government bureaucracy and the delivery of efficient service to the general public. Because if that is what he's speaking about, I support him 100%. Because based on what we are all aware of, when we have voices from various quarters, people complain on what seems like an eternity to get supposedly simple matters finalized. The very member who sits next to me now, the member from Beaufort North, South, sorry, has lamented the challenges, the difficulties, and how onerous it has been for himself and members in his profession to get things done, particularly at various registries. registries. So I seek clarification, Honorable Prime Minister, because on one hand, while I believe that you may be speaking about bureaucracy, it could also be interpreted that the bottlenecks refer to something else. And I, I actually faced it in government as well, various bottlenecks, but I do believe that some of the bottlenecks that they have in government is to protect us from ourselves. I'm obviously, Mr. Speaker, I'm in no position to, to lecture the Minister of Finance because in his profession, his, his exposure and, and a number of um, um, job assignments he had, he would be very, very um, familiar with, with um, what we call um, systems and procedures. Um, he would be very familiar with that. So, Mr. Speaker, under head 14, Electoral Department, Mr. Speaker, just some observations that I have made. I notice an increase under the recurrent expenditure of just over $1.7 million. Um, from my experience, I know elections cost a lot more than that, but there are lots of questions that I would like to ask as to whether is that preparation for elections? Is that a particular census that we are going to be seeing coming? Or are we finally going to address the whole issues of boundaries? So these are the questions that I would like to, to, to ask just on that uh, Member particular Member Sozel, surely the appropriate place for that would have been the Standing Finance Committee. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I am referring to what is in the, in, in the estimates and but revenue. It is the estimates and, and revenue that the Standing Finance Committee approved. And it is after I called each head, I called upon members whether they had any questions. I'm not saying that the Minister of Finance will not respond to you. I'm saying to you, the more appropriate place for those questions was in fact the standing I appreciate your guidance, Mr. Speaker, but we would have been there all day if I had to address some of the questions. That, so I, I, I think... Uh, well, remember, one of the things I don't think members appreciate is that the first job is a member of parliament. Guided, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, under head 41, Ministry of Agriculture, I notice a, a slight decline, Mr. Speaker, and obviously I'm concerned because as a government that promotes, you know, um, eat what you grow and grow what you eat, you know, Mr. Speaker, I would have expected to see a major in, in, in input, particularly to subsidize farmers to diversify. Mr. Speaker, we're very familiar that it is very difficult to obtain good labor now on the farms. We are, we are also familiar with the, the cost of labor. I, I applaud the, 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 the Minister of Agriculture because I am aware that he has sourced some tillers. I believe a lot more of that should 
be um, distributed throughout the, the communities. But Mr. Speaker, I believe a lot more should be done with regards to purchasing seedlings, seeds. Um, the member for, for Soufra Francis Jacques had to purchase a greenhouse from her CDP. I believe that should be a, on, on, a, on a wider scale from the Ministry of Agriculture to get these for our farmers. Um, irrigation, Mr. Speaker, irrigation lines, Mr. Speaker, is critical for, for, for our farmers. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm sure the, the Minister of Agriculture is very familiar with the Delsey water tank and you can see the, the, the miracles that it, it does for the farmers there. So the irrigation is critical, Mr. Speaker. I, I note, Mr. Speaker, that there was also some funds um, subscribed to enhancing the cocoa sector cocoa sector enhancement project and I'm hoping that um, you know we do grow certain parts of Chozel very very good cocoa Mr. Speaker and um, I'm hoping that you know there would be some sort of you know um, allocation made to specific farmers in the areas of Chozel Saltibus that, um, they, they, that, that could take advantage of that Mr. Speaker but more so Mr. Speaker and, and I want to tie both the Ministry of Agriculture and the Ministry of Commerce um, with regards to the whole cocoa and, and, and value added as it relates to you know what we produce Mr. Speaker. For too long we've been exporting and have to bring back you know some of the things that we, we export. We see the various areas in the in Soufre, in Babono, we recognize people who make the chocolate Mr. Speaker but there's so much more that can be done with, with, with what we grow Mr. Speaker. In fact um, uh, Mr. Speaker, I, 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 I have a, a friend, you know, every time I travel, you know, he said to me, make sure you bring up my, 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 my braps for me, that's how we refer to um, um, breadfruit, you know. And um, he took me one time to see the kind of byproducts that are made with breadfruit, you know, um, in Miami, Mr. Speaker. Um, uh, and, and it's amazing what we can do, but, you know, we need to start to focus a lot more on what we can do with the very things that we grow, Mr. Speaker. Um, I, I, I also want to, to recognize the growth in our CMOS industry. Um, it, it's, it's going in the right direction. I want to applaud the Schuzel Fisherman Cooperative for having an alliance with the Schuzel Secondary School. And they were able to produce something like 32 kilograms of very, very good CMOS. And, um, you know, we're hoping that we could see that sort of exercise being done in other schools, you know, to encourage and give various options to school leavers in terms of what they can get into, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I, I cannot um, leave the issue of agriculture and fisheries without speaking about the impact that the work that's, ha that's been done on the Schuzel fish port um, rehabilitation of 5.3 million dollars, Mr. Speaker, and I want to again thank the Japanese government and JICA for, you know, um, supporting us um, when we went up to Japan and ensuring that we were able to um, obtain these funds. And I'm really hoping that the issue in the Shuzel fish port would be one that is we will see the back of, Mr. Speaker. Um, I have been thinking, Mr. Speaker. Um, in terms of how maybe the Ministry of Agriculture can also assist farmers. And, and Mr. Speaker, I think one of the areas that we need to look at is the high cost that our farmers pay when they do not have irrigation from a river source or a spring, and they have to use Wasco. Um, however, Wasco would charge them at a commercial rate. Um, I think maybe the time has come for us to provide some sort of subsidy for our farmers um, and encourage them maybe to hire one or two people and then based on, you know, the kind of employment they create, we can provide subsidies as it relates to helping them with the, the WASCO bill because that's a very um, big input, the cost. Particularly now, we're hearing that um, 2024 would be an extremely patched year and you can well imagine, you know, the struggles of uh, some of our farmers will be going through, you know, um, during that, that, that drought period. So um, it's just something I think that we need to start um, exploring in terms of how much more assistance can be given to our, our farmers. Mr. Speaker, the, 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 the member for Soufre Fonse Jacques 
she's just she spoke just before me and um I, I i got the impression that she would be speaking after me because maybe she thought maybe i would you know raise various issues under her ministry um but you know mr speaker and i've, I've told i've told the member for souffre francais jacques that sometimes she reads me very wrong just like some time ago she, she she made an accusation of something i said which i i i have said to her that i never said it mr speaker but I noticed there was a slight increase under recurrent expenditure. And I just want to ask the question as to whether that would be as a result of, um, as, as she admitted, that the ministry may have to source sugar from outside of the region, and whether that increase could be um, as a result of that. But it is something, Mr. Speaker, that I'm concerned about because, you know, if we have to pass on the cost to particularly our small business people who thrive on some of the, the sugar um, der derivatives that they make, you know, um, the juices, the fudges, the thing, you know, obviously there's a domino effect and everything, you know, would, would um, increase. I think maybe the time has come and maybe with the advent of the new warehouse that we look very closely as to whether the people that we provide some of the the rice flour sugar at subsidy cost whether we need to start identifying the vulnerable sectors that really need that and and i mean why would various hotels want to take advantage of you know the the subsidies that we provide so maybe the time has come for us to really hone in on the people who particularly need these um subsidies you know and, and work with that i, I mean it, it's some work to do but it's something that we need to start because we cannot, we cannot maintain that kind of subsidies in the long term, Mr. Speaker, and we really have to, you know, look at look at it from a serious standpoint, Mr. Speaker. Um, I also, as I said earlier, Mr. Speaker, um, I do believe, and maybe even under the MSME facility, um, we need to encourage, particularly, particularly um, the, the, the 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 southern. Um, constitu constituencies um, where, where agriculture maybe is a, a, a more way of life that if they can come up with the, 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 the value added products that will be quicker to assist them in, in getting some of the loans to purchase the machinery and everything. You know, we have already amended um, the Fiscal Incentive Act to accommodate various machinery coming in mr speaker and so now i believe we need to, let's encourage our people to you know diversify um mr speaker the member for castries southeast is it southeast um mr speaker this morning he was not his usual self. I, I, I will admit he was not his usual self this morning. Um, normally, you know, I listen, I listen intently to his presentation, but I believe this morning he was a little um, all over the place, Mr. Speaker. Um, you know, making statements that like, your first be your last, that is dead, bury your dead, you know, things like that. So, so, Mr. Speaker, and I believe, Mr. Speaker, it could be as a di direct result of the significant reduction in his. In his budget, Mr. Speaker, he may, he may not have been too happy about that. But that's just, that's just, that's just me assuming, Mr. Speaker, because I, was, I actually was extremely taken aback, extremely taken about, Mr. Speaker, and we can turn to page... Serious reduction. I, I, I mean, there's a portion of it that has been transferred to the, minister, the Ministry of Tourism, which is the NCA, obviously, as he, as he, as he rightfully said, that's the right place, so I, I have no qualms in that. Um, but very surprised, Mr. Speaker. Um, on the page, page 448, page 448, line uh, 1601, public assistance, Mr. Speaker. Public assistance has dropped to over $10 million. I, I find that extremely hard to to agree to, to support mr speaker considering you know the uh, a government that speaks no 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 16 1601 speaks to public assistance 
Yes. And it dropped, it, it, last year it was 26. No, 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 no. Um, you, you, you look at wrong figures, honorable member. You look at wrong figures. Yeah, the figures, the figures are right there, unless you, unless you got a different, yeah, yeah but that, that's what it is, you know? So um, I, I think, I mean, public assistance, and we know, all of us know, as parliamentary reps, you know, the pressure we have to bear. The, 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 the member for Grosley told you about the, the number of people that he has come into his office, Mr. Speaker. So when the government makes such a significant reduction, you know, it is, it is a concern, and, and I'm hoping that the, 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 the Prime Minister can maybe speak about it. Yeah. I also want to caution the member for Castri Southeast, because, you know, he was boasting about some of the initiatives, and one of them, he said that Castri Southeast will get their own truck and their own pickup. I want to caution him about that, Mr. Speaker, because I remember when I first came into office in 2016, Chosel Saltibus Constituency Council had, in, had an excavator and a truck, and they were both rotting away. Be one of the reasons was that the, the, the Constituency Council could not maintain it. In addition to that, I think the member comes from a constituency where they have the most trucks in St. Lucia. Most trucks in St. Lucia. I lime, I lime. I lime, so I do that. I lime. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, um, you know, to make such a statement, I believe, you know, I think he's treading on very dangerous and sensitive, uh, sensitive area, Mr. Speaker. So, you're taking work away from your constituents, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, despite the fact that the member for Denry North, you know, occasionally chides me, I must say that. Um, there are areas in, in, under his portfolio that I'm very happy to see increases on. And one of the areas, Mr. Speaker, is the area of adult literacy. And I say so, Mr. Speaker, because um, in my former life, I remember um, sponsoring or recommending sponsorship to ad an adult literacy program in Bus, Bus Laguas. And I actually had to go to some of the night classes and make some presentations, Mr. Speaker. And I can tell you, it was an extremely rewarding exercise um, to see how some of the adults embraced the program. And at the end of the day, you could have, it was very visible, some of the improvements in terms of their ability to read and write and sign their name, Mr. Speaker. So I'm hoping that that literacy other literacy program is something that is island wide i'm also hoping that as also the minister of sustainable development the member will try to ensure that there's some education with regards to keeping our environment pristine mr speaker because i believe a lot of the older people are very guilty of thinking that it is okay to you know, do various practices that are dangerous to the environment. Um, you know, when I drive with my young kids, Mr. Speaker, and we see people fling things out of a vehicle, they ask the question, why are people doing that? You know, because they understand, and it's being taught in a big way at our schools, the preservation of our environment. So they know when they see certain things that it is wrong. And so I'm hoping that in that other literacy program, you know, there is a component to address the whole environmental and, 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 and protecting our environment. Because, Mr. Speaker, the future generation will be the ones judging us. Um, the member also spoke about the school rehabilitation. And um, I, I think it was sometime last year when he came to the house to um, alone, and he got significant sums. And he did indicate that um, two schools in Chuzel would be getting some support. So it is something that, you know, I, uh, I, I appreciate. But I also want to, and, and, and the, the, the member was extremely passionate in his delivery, particularly as he relates to other people wanting to take the role of, which is rightfully his. And he spoke, Mr. Speaker, very, very passionate about that. 
and I want to encourage him to continue to speak like that as a member for um, Denry North. Because if it's wrong, it's always wrong. Wrong can never be right on, depending on what side you are. And Mr. Speaker, I can tell you, and the Honorable Prime Minister may not be aware of it, but there are interventions happening in my community that I'm not even aware of, you know? I'm not even aware of various interventions happening in my community, okay? And I'm getting to know what's in things after the fact, okay? And, and um, education too, because the various rehabilitations that I'm, that I'm not aware of, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, recommend contractors. You, you want to share it. You want to share it. You share it. But, but that's for another story. But uh, there's one more thing I, I, I thought I should mention, which is a very curious. I, and I made, the, the member spoke about um, that under his budget, they would be paying off a significant portion of um, outstanding fees to UE regarding the law. Yeah, yeah. But I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of curious because, and I was indicating to the member for Beaufort South that as far as I can remember, law has not been on the priority list. So I was wondering how far back this thing, thing goes because if, and, and you may, it may have gone very far because, because what you're saying is um, the, the university was saying that they will no longer accept our, 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 our yeah, because of that. So, so that could be something that goes way back. But I, I know that that was something that, um, that was removed on the, on the priority list a while back. Sorry? Men and red. Okay, so I think you spoke about half a million. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, my good friend, is also my parliamentary rep, although I don't vote in his constituency, head 54. Mr. Speaker, the government has on several occasions told whoever is listening that their plans for improving sporting facilities and capturing and assisting talented sportsmen and women. No problem in that, Mr. Speaker. Because, Mr. Speaker, if we are honest, I think various administrations have recognized that the approach to honing this talent should be more precise and forward and focused. Mr. Speaker, it was with this conviction that the last administration heralded the, the, the Sports Academy, Mr. Speaker. And obviously, when you introduce something, there's always going to be room for improvement. And, and so, Mr. Speaker, um, we did improve sporting facilities. Um, there was major lighting done um, in various fields, Mr. Speak, Mr. Speaker. Um, and the lighting was particularly um, with regards to our athletes having more flexibility with their time so that, you know, when they come from work, they, they have the avenue so that they can, you know, conduct their various disciplines. Of course, Mr. Speaker, I think it's extremely important that the playing areas, the surfaces, the academy, all of that is useless if we do not have very, very rigid programs in place to encourage our clubs, and our individuals to take advantage of what is available. And Mr. Speaker, it is very important that collaboration should be done with the various communities and the sports desk, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, I note, and I will speak to some of the concerns. And Mr. Speaker, yes, I'm guided by your advice and maybe next time I'm wrong, I will, I will go in that direction. But Mr. Speaker, I note of concern to me, Mr. Speaker, page 608, grants and contributions. And Mr. Speaker, I note that an amount of $1,813,300 will be provided to the National Lotteries Association. Not National Lotteries Authority. Mr. Speaker, you can well imagine me being a bit perplexed with that allocation to the NLA, Mr. Speaker, because only Tuesday gone, we came to Parliament to approve a guarantee of $80 million for the NLA, of which, Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Finance made a point 
that the government will not be paying that debt. It is only a guarantee. No, you made, you made that point. I'm, everything I say is the truth, you know. Yeah. You, 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 as you said, you, 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 you'll come for me. You said you'll come for me. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, so that really is it, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and he comes with his, <laughs> comes with his own style, as you said. But please don't stop. <laughs> but Mr. Mr. Deputy Speaker, you can well imagine my, my, me being perplexed, Mr. Speaker, because, um, and I'm hoping that the Honorable Prime Minister would explain that $1.8 million that has been given as a grant to the NLA, considering what, what has just happened, Mr. Speaker. Because, Mr. Speaker, uh, and I think I, I have the... Based on what the guarantee is, NLA will be paying something like $3,571,993 biannually, about $7, $7 million a year. And we are providing them with one eight one three three hundred. So it's a concern, and I'm sure you can well appreciate my concern. So um, I, I, I do await clarification. And Mr. Speaker, since I'm on sports facilities, I turn your attention to page Six, six, five, nine, Mr. Speaker. Six, five, nine, head 56, line 0528, rehabilitation of the George Audlam Stadium under estimated project costs, total costs, two million five hundred thousand dollars, and the government intends to raise bonds to rehabilitate the George Audlam Stadium. Again, Mr. Deputy Speaker, you can imagine my eyebrow being raised because we are aware that we did receive a loan from the Saudis for $200 million, part of which would have gone to, the member would explain to me when he, when he, when he rebuts. But it is a concern that $2.5 million would be allocated and would be raised by bonds when we just, um, you know, because what, 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 what to me, Mr. Speaker, uh, the question is, you know, how much would go to St. Jude's and how much to George Odlum Stadium? Mr. Speaker, I move quickly to Uh, Ms. No, Mr. Speaker, I think I should also, I think I should also mention that I also identified, I also identified that one of the funding sources for our rehabilitation of sports facilities, page, page 666, what a number. Page 666, line 54. 666. Rehabilitation of sports facilities from the Republic of China and Taiwan. We're getting $1,850,000, Mr. Speaker. I, 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 I'm wondering, you know, Mr. Speaker, considering that significant amount that we we're, were supposed to be getting um, from the NLA of 80 million that, um, you know, that, that would have taken care of signif a significant portion of our playing fields island-wide as, as, the, as the deputy speaker, well, as a parliamentary rep for Vuford South indicated, um, where is Vuford share? And um, I, 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 I was pleased to see that you'd be getting an entertainment center. Um, um, the member for Beaufort South, and um, I am not sure if that is related to a sporting facility or, 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 or something else, Mr. Speaker. But, but, Mr. Speaker, my concern is, in addition to the $80 million, we have another 1.8, and I'm really hoping that the member 
for Grosile would address the issue of the lights on the Lafag playing field with all of that, all of that money that he's, he's receiving, Mr. Speaker, and also to address some of the challenges that the sportsmen and women face from, our, from some of our fields, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to speak on um, community inter in in intervention. Mr. Speaker, um, I have always boasted that the community of Chosel Salty Bus by far is the most pristine community in St. Lucia. In recent times, I've heard the member for Barbono and the member for Sufre try to take that position. But we know what we know, Mr. Speaker. Um, and I have, I have also said that many men and women around this table have strong roots in the community of Chosel Salty Bus. So I'm sure they will jealously guard you know, that, 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 that position that I'm taking, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I note in the community there's a, 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 an uptake of Airbnb, and, and we will speak a lot more to that in the, um, when, when we discuss policy, Mr. Speaker. But I raise that because from a community tourism perspective, Mr. Speaker, I would really like to see, you know, the, the intervention from the ministry in doing various things in the community. There's quite a bit of money going into community tourism, and um, maybe um, it's not shows us all the turn yet, Mr. Speaker, but we need to, what they, as they say, Mr. Speaker, um, strike while the iron is hot. And Mr. Speaker, I am really looking for, you know, for our fair share. Um, the member for Denry North, Mr. Speaker, makes it a point at almost every parliamentary sitting to speak to the fact that he did not get a bag of cement to do any work in his constituency. And he has every right, Mr. Speaker, as a parliamentary speaker, to, to speak to that, Mr. Speaker. But as I said, Mr. Speaker, yes, well, no, but in particular, the member for Denry North and uh, has been very, very loud. And, and, and even now in government, he still goes back there. Yes, you know, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. So, Mr. Speaker, as I have said to the member for, for Denry now, what is wrong is wrong. And the six members opposite at the time, the six members who were in opposition at the time, they all agreed on one thing, that it was wrong. They all agreed that it was wrong, enough. Mr. Speaker. And if it is wrong, but you know, and I was just telling the, the, the member for, for, for Mikud for Nof, Mr. Speaker, all of us, all of us in this, as a member of cabinet, have signed what is a code of secrecy. Nobody knows what's happened in the, in the chambers of cabinet. Nobody. Because when we come here, Mr. Speaker, we are all one. And I, I will not believe, I will never believe, Mr. Speaker, that members on the opposite side do not have their fights with the Prime Minister on various issues. So but you, but so you never come here and talk you about it. Right? You never come here and talk you about it, Mr. Speaker. So Mr. Speaker, so Mr. Speaker, unfortunately, 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 Mr. Speaker, matters of cabinet happen to be linked. Unfortunately, but that's for another show, Mr. Speaker. So Mr. Speaker, I am getting, I am getting, a cacada. I am getting a cacada. And Mr. Speaker, I am making most the most of the cacada that I'm getting. So Mr. Speaker, in collaboration with the Ministry of Infrastructure, because I always I always try to incorporate the relevant authorities in any work that I do. And in collaboration Remember with the Ministry of Member for Sozel, you have fifteen minutes. Oh, I'll, be, I'll be finished with it that time, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Say that again, remember? <laughs> Even my time, the member wants to take <laughs> Mr. Speaker, and so under the CDB, Mr. Speaker, I have identified two particular areas where we have seen quite a bit of vehicles falling into what is considered to be very steep gutters, Mr. Speaker. And so in slabbing these drains, Mr. Speaker, we have widened the road. Okay, and the residents who have had to wake up at all hours of the night to save people from that, Mr. Speaker, 
Thankfully, Mr. Speaker, we've been able to resolve that problem. I'm also very grateful, Mr. Speaker, and give thanks in all things, give thanks in all things, Mr. Speaker. I'm not a hypocrite, you know, that's one thing, I'm not a hypocrite. I'll give thanks, Mr. Speaker, because the Prime Minister made an adjustment that a portion of that CDP could have gone to social services, Mr. Speaker. And I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, in my community, the issue of medical assistance is huge. It's big, Mr. Speaker. It is, it, it, it is you know, Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Speaker, I feel for you, no? I feel for you. I feel for you. I feel for you. If I didn't feel for you, I would have, take, I would have tackled you a different way. Okay? Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, and I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, um, and, and I notice allocations for the beginning of the whole universal health care um, thrust, Mr. Speaker, and I'm really looking forward to, you know, we, 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 you know under the last administration, we kick-started this, Mr. Speaker, and I'm really hoping that you can see it accelerated because, you know, I think too many of our people are dying from the lack of uh, or the inability, Mr. Speaker, to um, obtain, you know, relevant um, care at our various medical facilities and also private practices because our medical facilities cannot provide all of the, you know, um, services that are needed. Mr. Speaker, I will also admit that um, there's been some input to assisting people who live in extremely deplorable situations in the community and um, people are extremely grateful for that Mr. Speaker and I want to thank the government you know for that assistance Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker there's a lot more to be said on my community and I can assure you when we come to debating the um, the the appropriation bill a lot more will be said as it relates to interventions in my in my community but to close off mr speaker if i look across the road i notice the member for denry north with a number of little books and i'm wondering if you could assist me mr speaker by giving me two of, two of them mr speaker so mr. speaker that being said i thank you i thank you for your indulgence thank you mr.